must invest in education. I shall devote all my efforts to the promotion of the progress of this university as a center of learning. I think it's only the law profession that has been placed the special responsibility of having public responsibility. And to make a difference in the lives of other people. And for these reasons, each day we come to work. Ed Angar po, umasa kayo, ay pagpapatuloy ko ang nasimulan ko na. Ed Angara was a driven man, not so much by personal ambition, but by some sense of service that he knew he was going to deliver uh, to the country. He's a man of vision, who's a man of action. Papalawakin natin ang pagkakataon ng ating mga kabataan na makapag-aaral. Yan po lang ang pangako ko sa inyo. I knew that you know, he was a hotshot lawyer. I knew he became president of IBP. I knew that he was headed for something great in our country. Nagpaaral siya ng million-million Pilipino. That has to be nearer at the top of sa mga nagawa niya. What counts is not what you know, but your willingness to keep on learning. The K-12, which is now being implemented, DepEd, CHED, TESDA, these are all his creations, his vision. Sa pagkat ako pong author ng Senior Citizens, Senior Citizens Act, at interesado po sa process of aging at matulungan ng ating he really uh, threw himself into the study of law, not just as a practitioner, but also as a student and as later on as a, as a master of the of the law in the sense as how do you improve the law? Ito, kung iiwalay sa ano ito eh, sa katawan mo ito, pinimda, kung bagay sa ano, anting-anting, yung aghimat. Habang buhay namin, tatanawin utang na love kay Ed Angario, kasi siya ang nagpasa noon eh. He was no nonsense, he didn't waste time. So he would do what he could do. Hindi ka pwedeng magreklamo kasi kung siya nga, 70 plus years old na, ang dami nang nagawa sa bansa, there's nothing to prove. Pero yung work ethic, ganun din. 7 a.m. nagsisimula na ng meeting, hanggang alas 10 nagmi-meeting kami. Sinasabi nila, how, how will you differentiate yourself from your dad? I go, I don't want to differentiate myself from my dad. I want to be like my dad. If all our legislators were like him, our country would be a better place. Few people can look back on a career as long and as distinguished in public service as Ed Angara. It's hard to summarize uh, in one sentence yung buhay ng isang tao na napakadaming nagawa. Cator, Tanyag na abogado, naging mambabatas ng halos tatang dekada. Pero at the end of the day, he always went back to his roots. Ayong boy from Valer. sad, it still hurts when I think about it, but of course we miss him. But you're there! Oh, yeah. oh, see, you look at you! I remember that part. Next to his office. 
This is the book what he gave me for, I think, Christmas. It's it's about science. I asked him about if he more books from the library, from his library. Yeah, what kind of books? Uh, the books of God. He doesn't really talk about his work, cause like when he's stressed, he doesn't like to show it, because he wants to always show that he's happy in front of us. I would always talk to him about like my grades and my classes. He'd always try every day to um, always spend time with us, even if it's just for a little while. That'll, that'll make his day all the time. A week after he passed away, he came to me in a dream and he said, Tootsie, make sure I'm never forgotten by the kids. So right then and there, Sunny and I put up photos of him and the kids in all their rooms because we wanted them to always remember him. gave me and this used to be my my dad's toy before and now he gave it to me he said do you want to go to trip then I said I said yes that was Sunday just before the Sunday he died Sunny found out by accident that the Lolo and Apo were going together to Hong Kong without anyone Nalaman ko lang sa secretary ko, sabi niya, Oh, binok ko na yung daddy mo at saka si Javier. Sino pa? Sabi ko, silang dalawa lang. Ha? Silang dalawa lang? Eh, parehong kailangan ng yaya yun, sabi ko. <laughs> he was happy because he had fun with me, but you... Tuwing Hunyo, kami, yung mga barkada ko, pupunta kami niya sa Labasin, upo kami sa playa, at tinitingnan namin, maaga-maaga, tinitingnan namin yung mga baliena. Nung panahon, may baliena pa nun eh. Kami, lagi lumalabas, nag nagbabangka kami. At kami, wala kami dalang baon nun. Isang palayo at bigas lamang. Yan ang kinalakhan ko dito sa, sa baliena. When he talks about Belair, because there's just so much um, love and, and history. He always talks to me about Belair Aurora. It's um, his favorite place. It's like where his heart really is. He's basically a provincial. No? Sampung anak sila, no? number six out of ten children. Yung daddy niya taga, taga Belair, yung nanay niya taga Marigina. He was not so much mother oriented, he was very close to his father. Son is the only boy in the family, so he had that relationship also with uh, with Ed. A lot of his stories are. I didn't like when Papa tap Papa and Tao in the Lolo Juan name, who I named after. Yeah, I didn't like when he did it. I like him in college, no? Kabayo lang ang sa kain namin. Ed and Dada came out of very modest uh, circumstances. Of course, his, both his parents were accomplished professionals. They, they were nurses, and his father also became a dentist at PGH. So you can't say that they were born poor, but, but they were certainly not rich. They didn't have money for toys, so yung laruan niya, yung, yung wax ng kandila, ipoform niya lang ng laruan. You know. Despite all of the accomplishments that he would later acquire in his life, he never quite forgot those, those roots in Belair. I think his parents were very dedicated. Both of them were probably among the earliest, if not the first, health workers in, in Belair. Apparently, they were highly respected in the community. They had the name because the, the Angara name was well-respected. He's proud of the history of Belair, how 
It was a small town and yet it was able to produce the president, Manuel Luis Quezon. How it was able to produce a Senate president, si my father. He was saying, magagaling ang mga taga-baler. Sinubukan niyang talagang hasain yung potential ng mga taga-baler. Doon ko talaga sa baler nakita kung how close he was to, to the place and to its concerns. Nakita ko rin na yung pagmamahal niya sa kanyang bayan, ayun din yung naging pagmamahal niya sa bayan as a whole, sa kabuuan ng, ng Pilipinas. A year ago, si Rin ang narito, bisita natin. Siya po ang nag-preside sa groundbreaking itong hospital na ito. Tingnan nyo, in less than a year, may hospital na tayo. accompanying Sunny when he was campaigning for Congress and it took us nine hours. We'd have to stop in the middle to throw up <laughs> and then go back to the car and then drive half the way. But and and now it's so different. It's important because Lola's company is there and I can visit him. I gave you my love and you can only guess how much you've given me in happiness. I thank you for the love that you have shown. You know, it's time I travel on the road. I really had to show people how much she really meant to me through the eulogy. Okay. for a while. Let your comforted by trust. That it is only for a while that we must part. So the memories within your heart. Now fly away, butterfly, as high as you can go. Well, he was the valedictorian of his class. That's why when he applied at uh, UP, I think there was a, a rule or a regulation that valedictorians and salutatorians were automatically given a slot. Yung kwento niya about UP is a very bucolic place. Eh. Back then, it was concert huts, these old uh, nipa huts and uh, uh, talahib. Eh. Parang probinsya yung diliman noon. So, yung kaibigan niya si Attorney Regala, may kotse, who became his law partner. And they would watch... Uh, Double features daw, pupunta sila sa Escolta. He wrote uh, for the Law Journal, and then he, he was elected to the Student Council in, also later on. He loved to read, so actually all those legal tomes or volumes probably for him was not as difficult to wade through as for others. <laughs> His child's ambition, he told me, was to be Minister of Justice. I guess uh, in the olden days, lawyers played a very big part. Lahat ng kabinete, halos lahat ng presidente siguro. Nakita niya, abogado. So, ay idol rin niya si Manuel Quezon, who was close to my grandfather. I used to tell him that maybe because he was born under the sign of Libra, you know, that means a very judicious temperament. He just seemed to be signing a lot of papers. I mean, I knew he was a lawyer, but I don't think I really understood like the concept of what a lawyer did. I actually first met him uh, in the University of Michigan. 
says, once we get back, you know, we should think about uh, setting up a firm which will be for Filipinos. So it's really nationalistic, you know. Sabi nila, you, you guys are crazy to leave such established law firms and put up your own law firm. But I guess it's that, it's that pioneer spirit uh, that, that led them to it. And, and they proved to be right because there was an emerging middle class at the time and they, they served that. The big Philippine firms would break up in two years. Uh, Ed is very proud of that. Uh, he says this is the only law firm where none of the founders ever separated. So it's till death do us part thing. But as far as Ed is concerned, from the beginning he said we shouldn't have any problems about money. So all, all the partners uh, really put in everything into the fund. So it's something that's special, something more like a family. It's now probably the biggest uh, law firm in the Philippines. I guess my memories during that time when he was a lawyer and I would, we would also visit him in his law office before he passed away. He'd always have his grandchildren call, they come visit me here, I'm gonna have lunch, I'm gonna be in a meeting, but it's okay, you know, you could just hang out there in the background. The first time I heard about him was when I was, I think, five years old or six years old. My mom and dad kasi separated after, I think, a year of being married. My mom said that when my dad took me to Hong Kong without anyone's advice, she just walked into Accra Law Firm and said, I want your best lawyer. I want to speak to Attorney Ed Angara because I have to get my daughter back. I think it's only the law profession that has been placed this special responsibility of having public responsibility as uh, distinguished from private responsibility. And that to us, this is quite a unique obligation. Can we elaborate on that aspect? What do you exactly mean by public responsibility? Uh, a lawyer must be more community conscious. He must uh, take more active part in community affairs. There is a credo of the firm where uh, he felt that the credit of the firm should, uh, of course, include the excellence in practice of law. He feels that uh, we should not forget that the firm should also do public service. He's one of the few I really know that who really believe in public service, you know. He's serious. He's serious about it. As the head of the Integrated Bar, which is yan yung asosasyon ng mga abogado sa bansa, he tried to unite them and he tried to institutionalize yung legal service to the indigents. Kasi at those days, wala pa yatang, or maliit lang yung public attorney's office at the time. Every lawyer in this country has been wishing to have a national office for the integrated bar. We have uh, tried for the past five years to get the uh, allocation to house the national headquarters of the bar association. He gave IBP its building. He asked Mr. Paco Ortigas for help. And the philanthropist that he was, the Ortigas family, uh, gave them the lot to build on for IBP. Kilala na siya bilang abogado. Nabuksan na niya noon yung, uh, yung Accra Law Office. At ang lumapit sa kanya noon ay si Odi Corpus, na pangulo nga ng UP. Ngunit lilipat naman noon para maging uh, Minister of uh, Education. Kaya naghahanap siya ng kanyang kapalit at ang kanyang kinausap ay si, ay si Ed Angara. Now, therefore, I, Onofre D. Corpus, Minister of Education and Culture and Chairman of the Board of Regents of this University, by virtue of the authority vested in me by law, hereby invest you Edgardo J. Angara as the 14th President of the University of the Philippines and deliver this maze. Symbol of the authority of your office conferring upon you by this act all the prerogatives and responsibilities of the President of the University of the Philippines. Naging presidente ng UPC si President Angara uh, noong panahon pa ng batas militar. So ang lakas ng resistance kay Ed Angara. 
In fact, doon sa kanyang inauguration, ay nagkaroon ng malaking rally, malaking protesta. I accept this mace and hereby solemnly pledge this pledge and hereby solemnly pledge that I shall devote all my efforts to the promotion of the progress of this university as a center of learning. They said, but why? He is a lawyer. Why appoint him to the presidency of the premier state university? So they need someone to modernize it and uh, to manage it well. Rather than an academic, sabi nila, you need someone who's a good, uh, good leader, a good manager. But over time, I think, people saw that his reforms made sense. And I remember how he first came to Quezon Hall. You know, I mean, he was a no-nonsense guy. So right away, he wanted to look at the campus, and he had all kinds of comments on the campus. He said, why do we have a UP veterinary college here when I don't see any cows or any animals? Pumasok mga 1983, Diamond Jubilee, and he successfully oversaw those celebrations and the massive fundraising uh, that happened then. They raised over 80 million pesos, which was a big amount at the time, no? to raise that for endowment. And in fact, President Roban made a statement which surprised me during his, her eulogy for him. Ang sabi niya, the faculty is still benefiting from the money he raised when he was UP president. What he wanted to do was, for UP was very focused. He created a committee to review academic programs. He had a committee for management procedures. He had a committee to review all the equipment in the university because he wanted to modernize it. Ed Angara improved the financial status of, of UP faculty and, and personnel. He helped professionalize teaching. It was under him that the university became a multi-campus structure. We had Los Baños for food and agriculture, Manila for the health sciences. UPV especially was established uh, during his term, and that is for fisheries and uh, marine sciences. We would go to his office in Quezon Hall and uh, order kami ng pizza and uh, mojos. And lang kami ito, takbo, takbo, Sunken Garden. And I would know the, the people there. Kahit nag-aaral ako sa UP, nakikita ko pa sila. Ed Angara would have made a terrific president of the Philippines. I think he would have been our true education president because of his service at UP, but also because of the broadness of his intellect and of his interests. Nakita niya ang, ang importansya ng edukasyon sa kabuhayan at sa development ng isang bayan. I always tell people na si Ed Angara ang nagtulak talaga na magkaroon ng magandang edu educational system sa Pilipinas. And people agree. They agree. Tito Ed, maraming salamat kasi kung hindi dahil sa'yo walang Michelangelo ngayon. Eight years niya akong pinag-aral. I was his scholar. So, alam kong maraming napag-aral si Tito Ed kasi Nasa puso niya talaga ang kahalagahan ng edukasyon. Kay Tito Ed ko na-realize at natutunan that uh, education is still the greatest equalizer. Bakit political science ang napili niyo? Na Napakaraming mga programa na IT, na nursing, na physical therapy. Bakit uh, pa rin? Yung makapagbibigay ng magaling na answer, I will make him or her a scholar. At nakakatawa kay Tito Ed, Hindi kagaya nung iba siguro na pag scholar ka, you just get your allowance sa secretary. Si Tito Ed, ano man na naging posisyon niya nung gusto niya, siya mag-aabot sa akin ng envelope para nakakapag-usap kami, nakakapagkwentuhan kami. Ipinaunawa sa amin ni Tito Ed, ang kahalaga ng edukasyon ay ipaalala sa iyong mabuting tao ka. At siguro yan yung legacy na iiwan ni Senator Angara sa atin. Palagi niya sinasabi sa akin, alam mo ako, kahit isang beses hindi ako nagbayad ng tuition sa buhay ko. He did his elementary in Baler Central, which is a public school. 
sa Roosevelt, hindi rin siya nagbayad. And then his uh, six years of uh, college and law studies were also as a scholar sa UP. And then yung master niya sa Michigan, University of Michigan, he was a DeWitt scholar. So, yun, wala. So, sinasabi niya, ako, hindi ako nagbayad ng tuition. So, forever, parang yun ang naging mantra niya. Kung magaling ka, tutulungan ka dapat ng Estado. His view was really for education to be a public good. In the sense na gobyerno ang gagastos, pero yung kabutihan, naramdaman ng lahat. Because it's not just the recipient of the good. It's the community who's also the recipient of the good. The community is better off because you have educated citizens, di ba? The community is better off because you have people who are qualified to work, to do productive work, and then to produce ideas which will give work again to other people. So that's why it's a public good, education. Sapagat galing sa UP, he was already getting involved in what would become the opposition to the Marcos regime. And so it was no surprise noong umalis sa mga Marcos ay lapitan siya ni Cory upang tumakbo para sa bagong Senado. He wanted to be appointed justice of the Supreme Court. And uh, we were listening on the radio waiting for his name. Hindi naman nalumalabas yung pangalan niya. So okay, maybe, maybe the Lord was reserving him for better or a uh, a calling more suited to his talents, di ba? Ang edukasyon ay lubhang kailangan para sa ating kinabukasan. Relevant education that instills love of God is the answer to ignorance. A primary cause of poverty and many other ills of our society. Ang Pilipino, kahit gaano kahirap, ay kailangan magkaroon ng edukasyon. Edukasyon ang susi sa kinabukasan. Ed Angara, UP President, Kampyon ng Edukasyon, Ed Angara for Senator. He, uh, he got sick, so he was hospitalized, so it was my mom who had to campaign for him and had to do most of the campaigning for him because he, he was confined in the hospital. You know, we knew it was going to be hard, but then, you know, it was something exciting because after EDSA, there were things to look forward to and then there were also other good people running for politics, so I think there was a lot of hope and a lot of excitement as to what was going to happen with the country. Kung sakaling ako'y padala ninyo sa Senado, isa lamang ang gagawin ko. Ang gagawin ko'y papalawakin natin ang pagkakataon ng ating mga kabataan na makapag-aral. And I actually worked for him. His one term, I worked for him in the Senate. And that's when I really saw what it involved. I think it was a good experience for me in terms of I got to go with him on his trips. He would go around the country. And I thought, you know, there was also a way of bonding with him and seeing really. Because, I mean, obviously, when we would see him at work, he would still be our dad. But then when you work with him, you also see his work ethic. And that's a big part of who he was. After law school, I was doing a lot of litigation. 2004, I became congressman. And he said, your skills as a lawyer are just the tools. But to build anything of worth, you have to apply yourself. If you look at the lawmakers who had the most number of laws passed in those years, lalabas yung mga pangalan namin. Kasi to pass a law is very difficult eh. Minsan magaling yung congressman, napapasa niya sa Congress. Pero wala siyang kapartner sa Senado. O minsan ganun, yung senador magaling, naipapasa niya sa Senado. Pero wala siyang kapartner sa, sa House. So kami, in those nine years, ang dami namin napasa na, I would say, landmark laws. Like the heritage law. It's the, the law which preserves our, our patrimony. And you have the UNIFAST Act that was passed around 2011. And those were the years also where K-12 was passed. And uh, the kindergarten, the free kindergarten law was also passed at that time. Ang Pilipinas will belong to the top 15 countries of the world. That's how prosperous we will become. It's up to the political leadership of this country. And most of all, it's up to you young people. I was a teacher previously, and then I realized after a while that I wanted to work in policy. And so I googled, so I go, who is the chair of the Senate Committee on Education? And I found this name. I sent my CV requesting for consideration in case they have vacancies. The next day, they called me for an interview. The following day, I was sitting with him in the Senate canteen. The following day, they were saying, start the next day. When you're working closely with him already, meaning you would be with him every day, to work on his bills, to work on legislative work, he would be calling your phone by 4 or 5 in the morning already. Pag tumawag pa ng alas 5 yan, nagtimpi pa yan, ibig sabihin. <laughs> Ayaw kanyang gisingin. Your call time is 6 a.m. to see him wherever he might be. By 7 a.m. you're starting your meetings. 
By 8 a.m. before breakfast, kota ka na for the day. <laughs> he, he blew up if he messed up, if he missed your deadlines, if he did something the way it wasn't supposed to be done. And that's how we got things done. He had a photographic memory. He could remember everything he assigned you. So I almost dreaded meeting him or bumping into him casually in UP because he would always remember. He was a workaholic. Sa Senate, Monday to Thursday ang trabaho. Kasi full work days yun, 10 to 12 working hours. Friday, usually walang paso. Parami na opisina walang paso. Kami, sigurado may paso. Sabado, hanggang lunchtime, isipin mo nang may paso ka. So block na yung schedule mo hanggang Sabado. Hindi ka pwedeng magreklamo kasi kung siya nga, 70 plus years old na, ang dami nang nagawa sa bansa, there's nothing to prove. Pero yung work ethic, ganun din. 7 a.m. nagsisimula na ng meeting, hanggang alas gis nagmi-meeting kami. So, bakit ka magre-reklamo? Sino ka para magreklamo? Sa dinami-dami ng senador, kilala mo kung sino yung nandoon for, for media and nandoon for the work. Si Senator Angara, nandoon, nag-aaral, prepared sa lahat ng committee hearings. Magano po siyang banig? 40. O oh, yan po. O oh, senior citizen, pwede niyo ba? Maraming maraming salamat po sa mga panukalang batas na ginawa niyo. At malaking tulong po sa buong Pilipinas yung ginawa niyong senior citizen card. Kasi ang dami niyo natulungan eh. Gamit ko itong senior citizen ko, araw-araw, uh, uh, over the country. Ang laking bagay nung no, pag sumakay ka sa base, kayo, 65. May, um, binabayaran ko na, 54. Mantakin mo yun, tubusin mo siya ang alob na isang taon yun. O sa jeep, ganun din naman sa jeep eh. Ma may discount ka rin bet, yan ang baba, 10. Kutso lang binabayad mo. Malaking bagay sa akin yun. Kasi masarap maging senior citizen eh. <laughs> Habang buhay namin, tatanawin mo ta na love kay Ang Gary oh kasi siya ang nagpasa noon eh. He's really built and left a strong legacy. I mean, he's no longer with us, but everybody with a senior citizen's card remembers him. The generic law, the Senior Citizens Act, uh, those those laws that really made a personal and and tremendous impact on the lives of millions of ordinary Filipinos. Ito yung totoong legacy niya eh, yung pag-craft ng mga batas na may direktang ikinabuti sa buhay ng mga ordinaryong Pilipino. How dull it is to pause, to make an end, to rust unburnished, and not to shine in use. I feel that he was a Ulysses figure because up to the end, he didn't want to just be idle. He wanted to keep on traveling and looking for new opportunities, new uh, possibilities. He's very forward-looking. He's always looking 10, 20, 30 years down the road. He was one of the first to file the bill to create the Department for ICT, Information Communication Technology. Tapos yung cyber crime law, yung data privacy law. These are all cyber age uh, legislation. Eh. Pero in, he led those legislation without being a techie himself. So talagang it speaks to how uh, visionary and uh, progressive siya mag -isip. We sought to preserve our heritage and sharpen our sense of nationhood. Some of these laws include the National Cultural Heritage Act, the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, the, Nas the new National Museum, and the Commission on the Filipino Language. 
even when he was retired from the Senate, he was pursuing sort of um, projects still to do with culture. He was working on this Galleon Museum, and hopefully that's one of the things that we'll still see come to fruition, because um, that was one of his last passion projects. He mentioned one time that no one ever forgets. I want to tell the world that Filipinos at one time were traders, artisans, and creators. Even early on, in, before the time of globalization, Filipinos were at the forefront of trade already. So, you know, tell a good story about our country and our countrymen. Binigyan niya ako dati ganyang kataas na libro. Iba-ibang libro. Galleon Trade, Aging, Gerontological Studies. Iba-ibang libro. Sabi ko, para saan kaya ito? Yun pala, ang dami na niyang iniisip. So he wanted to put up an institute for aging. So, grabe yan. Lahat ng makita niyang libro on aging, bibili niya. We visited the Tokyo Metropolitan um, Center for, for old people, for aging. And we would interview the faculty there, we would interview specialists in gerontological studies, and then iba-ibang laboratories on how they would experiment on new um, technologies for people who are old and how to help them in their last years. I'm very grateful to him for everything he ever taught me and also all the confidence that he showed. I think uh, anyone who ever had the chance to work with him is always grateful for the things they learn. His legacy will live on forever because the laws that he's um, authored are landmark laws that will always make the Filipino, whether a child, a woman, uh, a senior citizen, feel that their life is better because of him. Well, putting millions through school, I think it's hard to top that one. Paggawa niya ng health insurance, you know, now field health is helping a lot of people also. Modernization of agriculture, nobody talks about that. Uh, it came from him. He believed that uh, public service should make a legislator do things that would impact on millions of his countrymen. I think he needs to, uh, three lifetimes, you know, because he's into all of these things. I think uh, few people can look back on a career as long and as distinguished in public service as Ed Angara. Sedja, what I can promise is that we will build on what you've started. The work ahead of us is to build and even strengthen the structures you've put together. Because we owe that to you. Because you've mentored us so generously in your own way. And because we have the same vision for the country. because we want to be of service to the Filipino people. His work continues through us, who has worked for him and has learned so much from him. I think they're all grieving. We're all grieving in our own way, but uh, we have to go on. I miss him. I miss the jokes. I miss his presence, you know. He's, he's a silent presence, but I miss that you can, he's there if you need him. Actually, I felt his help during the elections. I felt, uh, I felt in crucial moments that he was guiding us. I felt him. I felt his presence. So every month, every 13th of the month, since the time he passed, I wanted to kind of remember and to not just remind myself, but also just kind of share him with like my friends and people who see my posts. So this photo, um, I think I was about two. So, you know, he's, he's very malambing now with his girls. And <laughs> he would always check on us. Like it's this story, when I gave birth to Manolo, he was one month old. He would call every day to say, put the phone on the baby's ears. I want to talk to him. So I'd put the phone on a one-month-old baby and he'd be like, hello, I love you, how are you? Like very sweet talaga. He was just the most loving um, father-in-law and lolo to my kids. Like super iba. Like iba the way he really... <laughs> Ay, naku, I miss him na. <laughs> 
I think I want to remember him with that quote, eh, yung every Filipino deserves a fighting chance. Agande. It's the essence of my father. I'm proud I had a father like Ed Angara. I think that's a once in a lifetime experience. You cannot write it up. You cannot. Uh, it's, it's kismet. It's fate. Yeah. I was in a tournament in Thailand. The first week I was there, he was texting me. Like, he's like, so how are your matches going there? How it is? And then, like, he just stopped texting me. So it was pretty weird. And then I checked my phone. I got, like, a million messages from my mom. I always thought, you know, I always thought my Lolo would live forever. I never thought there would come the day where I'd see him, you know, pass away. Looking back, I was always annoyed that how he'd always call me every day. You know, I kind of miss it already. Lolo, I miss you. Thank you for um, giving me your love. I hope you know that I'm really proud to say that you were my Lolo. Dear Lolo, I miss you so much. Thank you for everything. I really wish you were here. I wish you were here to help me with my school. My grades are going higher. I used to be so bad at all my subjects, but now I actually enjoy it. Lately, I've been reminiscing all the times I went to your office. Again, I miss you so much and I love you. Thank you for always being there for me when I needed someone. Now I have no one to tell all my secrets to. Thank you for always being there to help me with my studies. I love you so much and thank you again. From your granddaughter, Ines. Lola, I've been loving you for so long and I wish you alive again.